So a couple of videos ago, I said I don't actually budget. Yep, that's right. A personal finance guy on the internet doesn't budget. So what do I do instead? I'll explain it all in this video. Let's go. Hey everyone, it's Lewis back again with another video and today I'm going to show you how to get by with money without budgeting. So why don't I budget? Pretty much every single personal finance influencer, I hate that word by the way, um, but pretty much everyone on the internet lives and dies by budgeting to make sure that they live below their means, increase their income and save and invest a very good portion of their money to show everyone else that it can be done, right? Well, yeah, the majority do. But I actually can't stand budgeting and I'd love to meet someone who says they do and actually believe them. When I started my journey to financial independence, I th also thought that I had to have a budget because that's exactly what I was always told. If I cut everything down, I'll be much better off and I'll be able to save much more money. And this is absolutely true. However, I don't really believe in cutting down so much. Yes, it absolutely helps when it comes to the everyday stuff, and especially in times like this when inflation is out of control. But I'm much more of a believer in actually leveling up. And this is exactly why. The more you increase your income, be that with your regular job or with a business or side hustles or a mix of all three, the better off you will become and the more comfortable you'll be. I believe that I would be seriously limiting my potential if I only saw my life down the lens of my current income and nothing else. Saving within your income is only half of the battle. It's increasing your income and what you do with your money that is the answer to true financial independence. Plus, sitting down every month and working out exactly every little penny and how every little thing is costing you is really mind-numbing and time-consuming. So instead, this is what I do with my money. Every month, I get paid into my Monzo current account a day earlier than everyone else who works at my company who doesn't bank with them, thanks to their early payday feature. All of my income is paid into Monzo. This is whether that be from my main job or the few side hustles that I have. I then split my income into individual separate buckets. This is me paying myself so I can have a life. Of course, I have a separate current account with First Direct that pays all of my bills. After I've calculated exactly how much I owe everyone and send that money off to that account, out of sight, out of mind, I then take my disposable income, which for this month was just under £700, and transfer that into my Chase UK current account. From here, my disposable income gets split into several different buckets. I call these funds. And thanks to Chase's 1.5% easy access savings accounts they offer, all of these funds are making exactly that in interest whilst they sit there until I need to use them. So at the moment I have a spending fund, an emergency fund, an investing fund, a travel fund and a car fund. So I've got five separate funds on the go at the moment. Firstly, I'll dedicate some money to my spending fund or some people like to call it a sinking fund. After that, the rest gets split into the other funds that I mentioned. So let's talk about these funds and how much I'm putting into each one. For full disclosure on how this works, I'm going to be using this month's example of my pay so you can see just how much I put into each and every category. So being a finance guy and an investor, I like to work in percentages as opposed to monetary numbers. So I don't say to myself, I'll put £200 here or £500 there, it's more I'll put 20 to 30% here or 10% there. So my first fund is my spending fund. Now I'm not much of a spender anymore. Uh, I will spend good money on the things that I love, such as coffee, I need a good coffee in my life, uh, tech and travel. At the end of the day, I don't want to be spending my life staying in travel lodges and that's okay. That's my choice, it's what I want to do in my life. And I do the majority, if not all, of my work on computers, smartphones and the like, um, so I need to have reliable, hard-working tech by my side at all times. These categories are what I've chosen as special to me in my life and I'll spend good money on them. Everything else is just by the by. Food shopping don't really matter to me too much what I spend on. Going out, I don't need to go to a fancy restaurant. Nando's is perfect for me. 
<laughs> and little things like that. You get what I mean. Um, but I'll only need to spend good money on those things if I need to. So I'll no longer buy the latest iPhone every single year. I'm good with the 11 Pro Max until it literally dies on me. <laughs> uh, that's just one example, but you get the idea. So this month, my disposable income worked out at £650. I've rounded it up just to make it a little bit easy to digest for everyone out there watching. Currently, I dedicate about 15% of this income to spending each month. But I am going to bump this up to 20% from next month because 15 is a little on the low side and I need to understand, like everyone else needs to understand, that you can actually spend money and enjoy life as much as saving and investing for other things. So 15% of 650 is like 97, so I just rounded up to 100. 100 pounds to spend this month on whatever. I'm cool with that, that money goes straight to my spending fund. And then I have the emergency fund. Now I'm close to being fully funded for three months, which is about three and a half thousand pounds for me. So at the moment, I'm dedicating a high percentage to this fund because I wanna get it done out of the park completed. So I'm dedicating 40% to the emergency fund uh, and 40% of the 650 is 260. I actually rounded this up further to 275 pounds this month. So you're looking at about 42.5%, but I won't get into half percentages in this video. <laughs> I'll keep it simple. Uh, a side note to my emergency fund as well, all of the smaller amounts of money that I make from my side hustles, like the surveys that I do and other money making apps that I use, and I'll have a video on these very soon. All of this is being uh, currently dedicated to my emergency fund. So I, I hope to have this fully funded, I would say in the next two months. And then there's the travel fund. So as I've previously mentioned in other videos, me and Jess are very excited to be going abroad for the first time since February, 2020. Uh, we're going to Spain, one of our favorite holiday destinations. It's cheap, it's familiar, it's beautiful, it's guaranteed sun, what more could you want? Honestly, the last time we went, I remember we got these little cans of San Miguel Rattlers. San Miguel with a little bit of lemon in it. 75 cents a can. Game over. It's brilliant. Carla, I'm not as thick as you drunk I am. So with that being around the corner quite soon, again, I'm dedicating a high percentage of my disposable income to this fund, which is actually 50%. Half of my disposable income is going towards travel right now. So for this month, that's £325, although I actually rounded down to 300 just so I could dedicate a little more to the emergency fund. So it's basically 50-50 between the emergency fund and the, and the travel fund, um, minusing the spending fund as well, of course. Um, but this will go down to about 20% after that my holiday is currently paid for. So I can then just build that up on the side and then simply dip into it whenever I need to for a holiday. Um, I won't have to ever go into debt for a getaway or even for commuting. This is a travel fund, so it's not just for holidays. It's taking the bus to work and all that kind of stuff as well. So I also mentioned an investing fund and a car fund. But if you've been writing these percentages down, you'll know that we've already tapped out to 100 already from the spending emergency and travel funds. So yes, currently I'm not dedicating any money to my investing or car fund but I do see my emergency fund as an investment because that is an investment for, you know, life basically. So I don't actually drive at the moment, much to the chagrin of my girlfriend. Um, I can't tell you how many times she's dropped a hint that she wants me to drive. <laughs> so at the age of 32, I've decided to set a goal to start saving to, towards this so I can eventually start driving. Yeah, whatever. Look, I've not been much of a car guy really ever in my life, so it's not bothered me until now. I've always lived in, in a relatively big city, um, so tr public transport has always been quite good. But yes, I need to, I need to drive. Um, I should get it done and um, make life a little bit easier. So after I fully funded my emergency fund, I won't need to dedicate any more income to that unless, touch wood, I use it for an emergency, which hope that doesn't happen. Um, so I can then take that 40% and reallocate that elsewhere. And the exact same with the travel fund. Like I said, once the upcoming holiday is paid for, uh, the flights are already paid for with the points that I've earned for my Amex spending. Uh, we've, we've just got to do the hotel, which will be paid for once we check out. And then the spending money for food and going out over there. We'll probably visit you know, a few things out there. We know that we, we like animals, so we'll go and visit a zoo. We'll also go to uh, visit. We'll also go up the mountains um, that they have over there uh, in the cable cars and do a bit of shopping as well. Of course, get some clothes. There's a very nice mall out there, so we'll do all of that good stuff. 
But once all that's done, I can take that, that big old 50% and that 40% for the travel fund and reallocate that completely to, you know, the, the spending, the investing and the car and obviously the holiday as well. Just bump that down a little bit more and um, have a bit more freedom. Uh, I, I do want to have at least 30 to 40% invested each month. I wanna be quite aggressive with my investing. So going forward, long-term, this is how it will look for me. Uh, this is once the emergency fund is fully funded. So I'm taking that full 40% away from that and reallocating it to other funds. So 20% will go to in my spending fund, the fun money, you know, so restaurants, takeaways, coffees, days out, whatever. I'm, I'm basically eating or drinking my spending fund, apparently. <laughs> Another 20% will go to my travel fund. This is for both commuting to the office, going towards holidays, visiting families and all that good stuff. Uh, I'm going to call it at 40% to my investing fund and this will be non-negotiable for me. At the end of the day, I am 32. Some will say that I've left it late, but it's fine. I just need to dedicate more money to this and keep increasing my income, which I'm working on with my side hustles. And hopefully one day this channel and the website everyqd.co.uk. Um, got to get the plug in there somewhere. <laughs> uh, and then finally, another 20% to my car fund so I can buy my Tesla. I'm kidding. I'll probably just get a Ford Focus or something. So there we have it. That is how I budget with percentages. I don't write down that I'm spending £4.50 on coffee or £30 on subscriptions, blah, blah, blah. I know what my disposable income is. I know what my bills are. And after all that, I live within these means or below my means if you really want to look at it so I can invest for my future and be able to save and cash flow each of my other categories of my life without having to worry about debt or not being able to afford things. Buy now, pay later is essentially a swear word in this house. So of course, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you learned something from this and that it will help you with your spending and or saving and investing habits going forward. If so, give it a thumbs up and let everyone know what you think about budgeting in the comments down below. How do you budget for your life? Let people know, let's help each other out. If you haven't already, consider subscribing for more money related content. I've noticed that about 67% of you who watch the channel aren't subscribed. So if you are enjoying the content, please consider subscribing because it really helps the channel out and gets this content out to more people. I post videos every Monday and Friday at 6.30 p.m. UK time, so stick around for much more. Also, make sure to follow me on all of the socials down below for even more. And remember, until next time, every quid counts. See you soon.